Oh, this is going to be a great sister to sister. There is a question that goes like this. Does God care about our sexuality? Wow, Kathy, what a question. I know. How about this simple one? Can we cuss, swear, and go to heaven? Oh, this is going to be one heck of a show. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. So glad that you joined us today. We are five opinionated women of God and you send us questions and we answer questions from our hearts and from the Bible too. And I'm so happy today. I have Tiffany Gilbert sitting in for Flo today. Welcome yes, Tiff. thank you. So, and I know that you'll get lots of words in. Yes, I today. think so. Yes, we need yes. your wisdom. Okay. All right, good, okay, good. Well, this very first question, I, I'm gonna go to you. Okay. All right, here it is. And you send these to us, thank you. And you said, <laughs> <laughs> really, what is, the, this one, what is one aspect of marriage that no one prepared you for? Everything. <laughs> Everything, but, Specifically, because it's like, you know, you know, when you have kids, you know, you're reading all these books beforehand and yes. it's really, I mean, it's great to have that little bit of knowledge, but until you actually get in it. Right. Yes. Okay. Right. So, um, but specifically really how to fight for your marriage. Mm, that was, no one really shared that with me in the hard times. It's easy when you like each other, oh, when everything yeah, right. is going good, you're saying the right things to one another. But what happens when you don't like one another? What happens when there is a fence that tries to cre creep in in there? You know, uh, there's been times for me that I had to kind of check myself because, you know, when Pastor Jay doesn't say the right things. Um, <laughs> no. And I'm just going to leave it at no. that. I'm just going to leave it at that. Listen, you got to tell Listen, your sisters. You know what? <laughs> hey, we just got to show them respect. We won't, we won't tell no anybody. No one's listening. Okay, well, Shall since you said that and he's not here, then. Um, but yeah, you know, I would kind of just go my own way. You know, I'd be like, well, I'm not dealing with that. I'm, I'm not gonna take that. I'm gonna, you know, and, um, and I'm sure he's done the same thing as well, you know, with different things that we didn't like about one another, what we did. But, you know, you have to remember, it's a fight for yeah. your marriage. Yes, you yeah, have that's to, a great yeah, I mean, you, you have to stay in there. And then what happens though, is if you don't stay in there, strife creeps in. You mentioned that yeah. before, uh -huh. strife creeps in. And strife doesn't just, especially when you have kids, strife doesn't just affect you. Mm -hmm in him, but it affects the atmosphere of the home, which eventually affects the kids. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Who has wow. something for me? That is good. Really While she is. says fight, I am going to use a scripture. I wasn't yeah. thinking. <laughs> I'm misusing it. Really? Maybe. Um, you know, Matthew 3 says the ax is laid to the root. And what it really means, Jesus came and he's taken care of sin. But in a marriage, sometimes we fight about so many little things mm -hmm. and we don't reveal what mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the true thing the is. True, as right. uh, Tiffany says, the, the ax is laid to the root. Get to the heart of the matter. Yeah, that's right. Don't worry about the toothpaste. Get your own tube. Come on. You know, uh, don't <laughs> yeah. worry about the socks. Shove them aside till he's red. So doesn't true. have any more to wear or whatever, <laughs> you know, those sorts of things. Get to the real problem. Yeah, okay. What is it? Is it something you're doing? Is it something he's saying? Be honest. And you know, you could, I did go through uh, financial, uh, count, we, our pastor did all that financial counseling, uh, in-laws, children, mm -hmm. all that. But like Tiffany said, it's not just the knowledge, it's the experience. Yeah. You can't just have it in here. You've got to apply it out mm -hmm. there. So. Dig down to the real problem, the issue, and then understand how to fight. Yes. My yes. husband, fight. you know, yeah. he's calm, placid. I'm intense. I want to get to the issue. I've got to wait a couple hours, wait a couple, maybe sometimes days, to when he is ready to process it all because I'm intense, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, really. So anyway, something I wasn't for prepared for was how 
I was going to have to die a thousand Come deaths. On. Come on. <laughs> Wow, that's a great picture of marriage. <laughs> like you're dying to yourself. You're dying to your flesh. You're dying to your own desires. You're dying to your singleness. You're dying to your plan. And all of a sudden you're, you're merging together to yeah. become wow. one flesh. But also, I didn't realize and understand that I would have somebody in my corner 24-7. There you go. Oh, that's good. Aww. That's like, good. Two he's my partner. He's my yes. BFF. Mm -hmm. He's yes. with me. Good times, bad times, sickness and mm -hmm. health. So it's it's mm -hmm. a it's a good thing too. That's, That's good. good. Do you have an answer for yes. me? Yes. The concept of leaving and cleaving. Mm -hmm. I really don't think that that's talked about enough because oh. I think you think about it just like, oh, I'm adding this person to my life. Mm -hmm. That is right. not marriage. It is not an addition of somebody to my life. Right. It is literally to becoming one. This yeah. is a completely yeah. new life, mm -hmm. a new creation. You are not like, okay, here's me and here's my family and you come on in to this. Mm -hmm. No, you're creating new traditions, new holidays, yeah. Yeah. new, this is all new thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, the mm -hmm. thousand deaths thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> let's put it in a little bit of a positive so light. <laughs> Because, and, and it's not easy. And like, I think people think, oh, if we live together first, we're gonna work all that out and figure it all out. No, uh-uh, no. This is a covenant relationship. You don't need to figure that out beforehand because all that stuff is just like surface, like the socks and the toothpaste, da da da. This is, you gotta get to the relationship stuff and you need that in a covenant relationship. And that comes with leaving and cleaving and two becoming one under the Lord. I like that. I love that. And then I have another question for you that is nothing to do with marriage because that marriage one was good. But listen to, the, listen to this one. This is so good too. Someone wrote, the busyness of my life has caught up with me. Hello. And I realize I'm living my life on survival mode. Hello again. It scares me. I don't want to look back on a life full of regrets, but I don't enjoy life. Yet I don't know how to change. I'm so sorry for you. What do I do? Oh, Amy. All right. I've been here, I've gotten the signpost, I've gotten the, the, the tag, the license plate, whatever, the sticker, and I don't want to go back to there that ever again. Mm -hmm. In a hot second, mm -hmm. you can go from living your life to um, really regretting things yeah, and just yeah. getting caught in motion. Yes. So one thing I had to do to break the pattern, because I would be, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty busy, you know, I hate that word busy, by the way, but yeah. just yeah. a full life mm -hmm. with church, mm -hmm. staff, leadership, husband, t teenage boys, daughter calling all the time, you know, <laughs> TV stuff, There's Hope more. Today, as well as sister to sister, friendships, family, I mean, it's a lot, right? And you can just be like, uh, it's a blur, but I just decided wherever I'm at and whatever I'm doing, I'm going to be present. That's great. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That's good. So when you're present, mm -hmm. you're not thinking, you're not at school oh, volunteering for and helping the kids and thinking about mm -hmm. TV or church or yes. I can't be home with my husband and we're trying to <clears throat> enjoy life and we're talking about all the crap at church. You know, it's like we've yes. got to stop yeah. and yeah. be present present yeah, with the so people that we're with and stop the cycle and live your life. I like yes, it. Be present. Good. Be wow. present. I like what it. do you have? Do you have a scripture on this? Oh man, I got a bunch. <laughs> All right. Well, just uh, give me one. Well, the one that came to mind before I looked a couple up was Psalm 90. Teach us to number our days mm -hmm. that we may give to thee a heart of wisdom. And that's what Amy's saying. Be present. Have the Lord decide what you need to do before you decide everything you're going to do. And if you're a yes person, it's okay sometimes to say no. Absolutely. It's okay yeah. sometimes to take something mm -hmm. off your plate. It's okay, as I did, work part-time when your children are little, mm -hmm. if you can afford it. Mm -hmm. It's okay to go full-time when the time comes. So don't feel like you have to be a superwoman and do everything, because we have been there. We think, and, and it's our pride. It is, yeah. God accomplishes his purposes on the earth. He'd like to use you, but maybe you're too busy. Maybe I'm too yeah. busy to be able to understand that. So Mary and Martha, Mary was like, don't you care, Lord, I'm so busy, help me. <laughs> That's a good one. And, and Jesus says, 
you know, Martha's chosen, uh, Mary's chosen the better part. He understood her calling as a servant, but Martha had no joy in her calling. Yep. She's saying, be present. Yeah. Martha wasn't present. She was thinking about what everybody else yeah. wasn't doing yeah. to help her in her calling. I like that. <laughs> so, Very good. Don't say the Lord, you could say it, don't you care? Because he will answer you. Yes. Uh, and then uh, sit at his feet, see what he wants you to do. Decide there. We've, we've been there. We've made mistakes. We've come back, turned around. It's okay to turn around. That's we right. grow in our That's mistakes. Right. That's right. I Tiffany, think, Corey, we I have. I also think, though, that there, there are times that it is good to be busy. Like, I just came out of a very extremely busy season of my life, and it was because I was volunteering for something my youngest daughter was involved in. And I look, I look back, and I'm like, she's only going to be in high school for four years. Mm -hmm. Am I going to look back in my life and wish right. I had more free time? Or yeah, am I going to wish good. that I was involved in the things that she was involved yeah. in? Yeah. You know, you have to kind of yeah. wear that, weigh okay. that out and say, like, no, I'm not going to be like, oh, man, I really wish I had, you know, sat around more. No, you know, <laughs> like, you know, you have to kind of look at that. And, and there's also personality types and there's just, I thrive on busyness, mm -hmm. you know? Now, if I'm going to be complaining about it all the time, then it's not right. right. But like, mm -hmm. I do think there are some people that are just like, constantly use, oh, I'm too busy. Oh, I can't. They just never get involved in mm -hmm. serving mm -hmm. or ministry or anything. Mm -hmm. And we are called to serve, right. you know? Right. So, so I do think that there's a balance here. Mm -hmm. Flo's word, she's right. not here, but yes. finding that balance. Right, right. And I, I, that reminds me of what Amy said, be present. And you yes. were present for your daughter. But I'm going to go to this last question because, ooh, it's really good. Ooh, Roxanne, I'm going to ask you. Uh -oh. Okay, can a believer... <laughs> <laughs> Swear or cuss? <laughs> what do you say? say I, you? Don't, I don't know. We'll have to find out when we get there, I think. Uh, <laughs> you mean if we're going to go to heaven because we swore? Yeah. I, yeah. Don't, I don't know that we're not going to go to heaven. Right. I do have to say this. This is true confession, so maybe the camera person could shut it off for a minute. <laughs> oh, this is good. <laughs> I don't usually swear out loud. You know, my staff knows that, and we're all careful about our language. But I, I swear in my head. <laughs> All right. You Love know, it. the light screen and the person <laughs> doesn't move. Uh, something happened. You know, so our thoughts and everything, the Lord already knows. That's so right. I, That's right. when we got this question, I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, Lord. Okay. It was like the Holy Spirit saying, okay, stop it. Stop it in your head. The, the thing that I'm concerned about is not just the, it's, it's called the cursing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we want to curse somebody? Do we want to curse ourselves? Do we want to curse the thing we're doing by saying the D word, the other words? Because what are we putting out there in the atmosphere? Are our words life or are our words death? Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to know that if somebody is cursing you, just know in Proverbs it says a curse without a cause goes to flight. So you're not really cursed. Okay. Oh, I think, cursing. oh, yes, yeah. right. Okay, Roxy, your, your mom's here and she wants to give you a spanking. Because <laughs> <laughs> your you're cussing in your head. Oh, she never gave me a spanking. I think about people like my papa who his, his like default word was damn and he'd be like, damn, and it was kind of like his Wow, you know, and <laughs> he was a believer, but he had an unrenewed mind. You know, he wasn't yeah. your, so I'm just thinking, I just think God loves people. And I would rather someone be real and cuss than be fake and, you know, deceptive. So I, yeah. I, I don't know. To me, sometimes it's refreshing to hear somebody just be themselves. But I think there's, there are certain swear words, and we know what they are, that when it comes out of someone's mouth, you cringe. Oh, and yeah. if it would be a believer, I would doubly no. cringe. Yes. So I have a kind of right. strong feelings on that. Yeah. What do you think, Tim? So, all right, I'm ready. Oh. <laughs> ready to swear? Stretch. <laughs> 
No, you know, first of all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention this scripture wise really quickly. Um, and there's many of them in the scripture, 1 Peter 3, 10, um, in, in there, it's not the whole scripture, but God commands us to keep our tongue from all obscene words, filthy and corrupt communication, lying, swearing, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Okay, salvation is not what you can and can't do, it's who you are. You know, and um, usually, I mean, I, I think we really need to make sure that we're careful of what we say, what comes out of our mouth. I feel like, you know, if you are, you know, a believer, you are, are I mean, it's a command. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There, sh there should be something inside that should check you. That should yeah. say, okay, wait a second. Uh, just really quick, there was a woman who, a young woman, I was in college, I was doing things, I was saying things, and I was professing to be a Christian. Mm. She came to me and she said, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. What makes mm. you different? Mm. That stuck with me the whole, I mean, all those years. Wow. That wow. stuck with me. So I would challenge, back to the question though, do I think I agree with you? I'm, you know, I, I probably, I, I don't think so. Um, but you know, you don't think so. What? But I'm going to err on the side. Wait, you don't think I, I don't, don't think, think you go to I, I, no, I don't think you're going to go. I, I think you can still go because I, I think, like you said, he didn't have an unre he had an unrenewed mind. There are people on different parts of their journey with God. Right. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I, I, I can't say that, you know, but I'm going to err. If the Lord commands me to do it, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Oh, this is so Wait, Corey good. Say I'm just saying we don't become Christians and become perfect. Perfect. No. Like we still it's a sin. Yeah. Like I just think it's like I mean, I personally don't swear. Mm -hmm. It's just not something I grew up with hearing, and it's just something I choose not to do. It's not something I struggle with, but do I struggle with other sins? Yes, I'm still a Christian. So I just think it's like I don't know why we're questioning whether we're going to go to heaven or not what, because we swear. Well, but I just think that the people write these questions to us, and we try to answer them <laughs> the best we can. So darn you. We'll be right back right after that. <laughs> Hello, welcome back. You've joined a very lively conversation and it doesn't stop because you sent this question in too. You asked, does God care about my sexuality? Hot button, hot topic. Corey. Um, well, God cares about everything. That's true, yes. But he cares most about your heart. That's true. And that's it? <laughs> that's all so you got on the sexuality question? <laughs> Well, Amy, I hope you have more. I do, yeah. Uh, this is probably like the number one topic yes. right now that is hitting us in the face in, in our culture. Through music, programs, uh, corporations, churches, the government's talking about it. And, you know, does God care about my sexuality? 100%. He created you. He created you in his image and in his likeness. He created you male and female. And it's mm -hmm. it's very simple. It's not it's not complicated. Right now it is so like everything is upside down, turned inside out, and what is it? And I I I feel like this today, and so therefore I am, and it's like people are going against biology, psychology, physiology, uh, Bible the, against the word of God and um so I would say that we've said what's wrong is right and what's right is wrong. Right. Mm. So you have to get back to the absolute truth. So for me, the Bible, the word of God is the absolute truth. So I believe 100% that God created sexuality. It's a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. And it's a God-given right. thing. And that's not against what you said too. Corey said God cares about everything, which he does. That's right. Tiffany, what do you say on this? I, I agree with both of my sisters, what they shared. Um, Yes, of course, but I think the sexuality piece, you know, are we talking about, you know, transgender? Yeah. Are we talking about, you know, does he care that I want to be a man? Does he care that I want to be a woman? You know, I mean, these are real issues, you know what I mean? But I, I have to go back to what you shared as far as what does the word of God say? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think that's just the bottom line. You know, I, I don't think there's any way of getting around that. That is the bottom line, is right. what the Word of God right. says. And there's, the, I think what Corey brought to the table is perfect, that he cares about our hearts. But I think that all of us, 
We all know somebody. Mm -hmm. I do. My cousin is a is transgendered, and I remember she wrote to me, he wrote to me, and said, thank you for not judging me. Mm -hmm. Well. It's not my place to judge. That's right. That's so I, right. I really appreciate that you wrote this question to us and it's a tough one in today's world. So go to the word of God. God will give you wisdom. If you wanna know what God thinks about stuff, ask him and he will tell you. And that is the truth. So I'm gonna to go to the next question. It's good too. Oh my gosh, this is the Proverbs 31 lady. We just love her. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. aye. She's Lemieux, perfect. Lemieux's mother, however, Lemieux. She's a perfect, she's a perfect woman. Okay, listen to this one. Proverbs 31, 25, 26 says, she dresses herself with strength and clothes, clothes herself with dignity. Amen. How do I live that out? How do I do that? What's practically, how can I do it? Tiffany. So yeah, I, I love, love, love this scripture. The whole thing, the whole, the, yeah, the whole yeah, the whole thing. Right. Um, but specifically, when I look at strengths, she she dresses herself with strength. When I think about strength, I, I think about the scripture. I can do all things mm -hmm. through Christ who strengthens me. So when we hit those moments in life, which we all do, those challenging moments in life, those those heated times, we have to understand that you know, practically speaking, when you hit those, Lord, you know, praying and asking the Lord to strengthen you to get through those moments. And with regards to clothing herself with dignity, dignity is valuing yourself. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. You yes. know, so you have to know, and, and in order to value yourself, I feel like, or vice versa, really, you have to know who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, that's essential. You know, that's number one. So I think, you know, whether it's um, situations that you confront in life, regardless of what it is, those two pieces I think are important to really tackle and to really have victory in those certain areas right. in life. Go girls. Mm -hmm. Do you have more scriptures to back up this scripture? Oh man. My <laughs> I bet. My sisters are awesome <laughs> on clothing themselves. You know, I want to hone on that word dignity. Yeah. Okay. You have to respect God. Yes. And I don't even say respect yourself first. You've got to respect other people because when you God loved us when we were still sinners, but he still had a respect for us in the sense that he cared enough and valued us that he sent his son. So when we start respecting the Lord and we show respect to other people, our dignity shows. Then we begin to understand who we are. You know, I'm pretty, I feel pretty good that I, I was nice to that person when they weren't nice to me. Yeah. You know, I, I feel pretty good when I reached out and helped somebody that somebody else wasn't willing to do. That somebody else was saying to me, stand back, stand back, don't do this. But I went forward anyway to do what Jesus might have done. So respect the Lord, respect other people. And then you will begin to cultivate respect for yourself. Right, yeah. the dignity and part. I think it's important to she didn't dress herself with Gucci and clothe herself with Valentino. Mm -hmm. okay. These are inside That's virtues. Right. That's this right. is yep. what I would call moral leadership. Yep. So this is something that is so deep within me. Yep. This is something that I'm That's going right. to do whether someone's watching me or not watching me. I'm going to clothe myself with an inner strength and with an inner dignity that cannot be taken or removed from any other person or circumstance. Right. But this is who I am in public. This is who I am in private. This is who I am in good times. This is who I am in bad times. It's a deep moral uh, convic conviction and virtue. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Corey, what do you, you have? You asked for another scripture. Yes. And you know, the scripture is, man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. This yeah. is not yeah. about clothing yeah. on the outside. Right. Just yeah. like right. you said, this right. is about your character. Right. The Proverbs 31 woman is strong. She's successful. She's a woman of character to go along with what you said. She is a woman that respects others. And when she does that, she all of the things that she does when she is building up this successful career and when she is building up the, the, this inner character, she is having this dignity, this self-respect because of all these things that she is doing and 
being this Proverbs 31 woman. She can have clothing herself, that inner character oh, no. of dignity and respect and self-respect. Well, I was gonna say, did anyone look up the definition for dignity? It's self-respect. Mm -hmm. Self-respect. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I love that. Yeah. I love that. And I love mm -hmm. all of the Proverbs 31 women. And I certainly don't mean to make light of her yes. integrity. And in my, my Bible, I have a hippie Bible from the 70s. And <laughs> when I looked this up, it mentioned that she speaks with kindness mm, yes. in, in, in my particular yes, version of yes. this particular scripture. Yes. And that's why any scripture that we talk about, look it up, mm -hmm. find it for yourself and stay right there. We're going to wrap this up. We close with this scripture, Jeremiah 17, verses 7 and 8. A special scripture to me, and I'll tell you why. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Here, Jeremiah echoes the words of David in Psalm 1. Years ago, I would speak these words to my young sons. This is a photo of them then. Years later, one of my sons gave me this gift, echoing back my words to him. This is a tree planted by the water with the words of King David. Can you believe it? I love and it. be encouraged to plant your life beside the living water, Jesus, and be refreshed by his words. We thank you so much for being with us here. We are sister to sister.